Good evening everyone, welcome to the second of the four introduction to tutorials. Uh, today we're going to be doing Photoshop and should be pretty fun I think. I think Photoshop, um, everyone knows what Photoshop is but it's uh, it can be quite confusing as to what you want to do with the program, whether it's editing photos, you can make graphics with it, you can paint with it basically anything that is image based and it also fits in quite importantly to the workflow when working with video also so uh, without further ado you know let's let's just go for it you know what I'm saying right Photoshop here we are this is probably what it will look like when you open it you may already have a canvas here if you don't um, I'm gonna show you so you come up to file new and then you're going to get this dialog window a lot like the After Effects one and uh, if you remember the analogy about there being a canvas well in this case it's even more apt because we will actually be drawing our painting uh, you can start by going to file and then open and using a photo perhaps but uh, today we're going to be starting from a blank canvas and I'll show you how to import stuff afterwards so uh, name you can name it whatever and call this canvas. Uh, the presets, once again, if you have a size that you're going to be working to, you can select it from here. At the moment, we have 1280 by 720. If you remember from the first video, that's 720p HD. Resolution. Resolution. If you're going to be working with video, then, or even on the web, really, um, 72 pixels per inch is fine. If you're going to be working with print, then you want to crank this up to 300. Uh, I'm going to leave this at 72 for now, but uh, basically, you can cram in a lot more information into each uh, into small spaces, basically, and uh, this really shows when you come out to print. So if you're going to be printing your work, I suggest you crank this up to 300. Uh, color mode. Once again, you have a choice here. You will always either be using one of these two. It's very rare you use bitmap, grayscale, or lab color. Um, RGB is by default what I would use, unless I am going to be working with print. Like I said before, you would have to select CMYK color. Um, just know that when selecting CMYK color, some parts of the program will work differently, and some parts, like the filters, might not be available. Um, if you're wondering why some of your filters are greyed out or you can't use them, chances are that you are either in 16-bit colour, which is more colour information on your project, but also less control in terms of filters and such. So leave this at 8-bit and RGB colour most of the time, I reckon. Finally, the background doesn't really matter. You can have white, uh, a colour. I choose to leave that transparent. If I need to make a background, I'll make it myself. Thank you very much. Okay, so we have opened it, and your screen may look like this, or it may not. Uh, Photoshop has a number of different ways of uh, displaying the canvas. If you hit F on the keyboard, you can de uh, shift through these. Can you see we've got a white color, background color, and you have the popular window mode. I think this might be the default. I'm not quite sure because it's been a long time since I had Photoshop at default. I have this all customized how I want it to run so um, I'm gonna hit F and this is the way I like to work the most um, but obviously you can choose up to you you can also change it by going to view and screen mode and choosing from here okay so I guess the first thing for me to do is explain the interface a bit uh, it's very different to Photoshop obviously because this is you, you're not going to have a timeline although you can have a timeline uh, but you know most of the time you're going to be doing something picture wise or painting wise and you don't need half of the controls that you would have in a video editing program so just be aware of that and here I have this is the main toolbar I think you can uh, well just like any Adobe program you can move this around I choose to leave it on the left um, and it's the same with any of these windows, you can break them off, uh, have them independently, I could put the swatches here and then access from there. Just know that no matter what you do, you can always redo it. If you lose a window by hitting X, you can access them all, 
here all the ones that are ticked are the ones that are currently active somewhere around here um, the ones that are unticked if you want to bring them back you can just tick them uh, yeah I mean like I said everything is movable so um, say for example I wanted to bring my colors and my my styles and all the rest of it up here and then I can bring them back and the the thing is once you are happy with the way your interface is you're going to want to save it so you go up to window workspace save workspace and then every time you uh, log into photoshop you'll have your workspace ready which is cool and uh, just see what works best for you and uh, the way you want to work is really important actually um, this is the way I like to work and uh, yeah I'm kind of blubbering on a bit here so let's get okay um, first thing I want to point out is layers um, just like in the timeline in After Effects everything is controlled by layers in here for every item or photo or effect even that you have in here you're usually going to have a layer uh, by default we have one layer this layer is transparent this checkerboard here represents that there is actually nothing here there's not literally a checkerboard if you save this out you will have completely transparent information here just want to point that out if you want to make a new layer you can click down here on the little page icon and we have two three four etc I'm going to select these and drag them into the bin and delete them and we're back to one layer uh, you're not going to want to I'm not going to confuse you with any of the others down there just know that the layer just like in um, After Effects you can lock the layer you can hide the layer if there's something in it I'm going to switch go over here to my um, the paintbrush and I'm going to click here to set it to black and white and if I paint here massive black circle of death I can if I click there it will update it sometimes it doesn't always update now I can poke it in the eye and it will become invisible and just like I'm going to bring it back if I click here change my color to red just like in um, After Effects the top layer in the viewer will be the one that is visible above all the others so once again imagine you're looking down on the canvas okay so I'm going to um, make a new layer in fact and delete this one so now we're back to blank um, I'm gonna run through these tools on the left because they're the first ones one thing you should know is that no matter what you select you will get a kind of context sensitive bar up here which relates just to the tool that you have selected down here on the left uh, just be aware of that if you're wondering why it's changing it's because this up here is basically the parameters for whatever tool you're selecting here on the left okay I'm gonna run through these um, this is obviously the select tool the most used tool in the armory if you select you can move your layer around pretty self-explanatory really I'm gonna bring this back here this is the marquee tool basically these uh, the marquee if you see this little black arrow in the bottom right corner if you hold down the mouse button you'll see that there's then additional tools that all relate to what this is generally the marquee tool is great for selecting areas and then now that this is selected I can move the bounding box of what I want to select here and then if I want to say I want to move whatever's in here I then select my select tool and I'm now going to split this layer into two and if you now you have a problem in if you want to paint say I want to paint um, purple I say it's a problem it can also be uh, exactly what you want to do but now I can only paint within this selection if I try paint here this will not happen so you have to bear in mind that whatever you do when you have a selection on the screen is only going to be kind of affecting what's in the actual um, area that you've selected with the box uh, you can make a circular one if you want you can by holding shift make multiple areas 
and even like bring these and combine them and then if I switch to my select tool I'm going to press V it's one of the first shortcuts you should learn once again and then see we can move this whole area uh, the important thing is that you want to know how to deselect this and uh, it's quite easy to remember it's command D on the Mac or control D on the PC and now we are back to having things unselected and uh, somehow we've created some kind of abstract composition here which is quite horrible so I'm gonna make a new layer and delete this again moving on the lasso tool is a bit like the select tool but by clicking points you can uh, make an abstract shape when you go back to the start you've now made a selection again and once again I can now paint in this selection press command D deselect you can also do it by coming up to here I think or maybe not well it's easy to remember anyway command control D uh, the magic wand relates more to when you are trying to select an area of color so if I were to let's say for example I'm gonna paint in blue select B for the brush and if I select my wand now I will select basically the general blue area this is probably not the best example to use um, you're gonna you're gonna see this more if you were say for example um selecting an area from a photo like the sky you want to select all the sky which is blue you would use the magic wand although there are better ways of doing it so I'm not going to confuse you too much just know that it's a very useful tool for selecting large colors area of color in fact what we are going to do now is I'm going to show you how to import I should have really mentioned this earlier how to import um, a picture so you would think that going to open and then I'm gonna bring this in this is a kind of Photoshop piece I did a while ago and when you go to file open you're gonna get the the image opened in a new document it's gonna have a padlock on it which means that uh, in this case you can actually uh, work with it but um, you're gonna think okay yeah but what if I had already made a composition and I wanted to bring this image into the other one which is often what you're gonna be doing especially like in here I built this out of lots of different photos and elements and I had to bring them all in so how do you do that well there's two ways really if you're working in window mode it's as easy as going using the select tool and dragging it in and as you can see it kind of looks bigger in here which is because this here is zoomed at 50 percent one thing I forgot to mention I'm gonna close this now so we're now back in our original composition press F to go to the full screen mode uh, if you look down here it shows you at what percentage you are magnified uh, just like in After Effects if I use uh, if you have the scroll button on your mouse you can scroll in and out um, but what I'm going and you can also use command minus or you can even use the uh, tool here although that is really horrible if you double click it I believe it takes you back basically you can select the area that you want to uh, highlight and double click it to bring you back to 100 so if I just want to magnify that this is taking a while to happen because um, the image is quite big so um, moving on um, this is the crop tool now one thing I should mention actually before I mention the crop tool is if you go to image and image size you can see how big your document is if you're wondering like how do I know how big my document is after I've made it in After Effects we went back into the composition and changed things around um, in this case you would go to up image image size and it shows you here the size of your image and then you can actually s scale if I constrain the proportions if I want to make this image uh, smaller you can enter the new value hit OK and this image will now be smaller command undo but what if you want to just expand the area around the image 
say you want to add more detail here 